So I'm about to do a very in-depth review of the pre-production Sherry made by Time Machine Guitar Company. We're going to review all the materials that it's made with because the guitar isn't actually made yet, but you'll at least get to see everything that's going into the guitar, and then we're working very hard to get that first prototype out, and that will be out soon, and as soon as it is, we'll make another video showing the guitar and doing a demo. Starting out here, we have some Appalachian hard maple. This is what the neck is going to be made out of. You can see it there. Sourced right here in the Appalachian Mountains. The fingerboard, also hard maple, but this is a figured maple. Going to try to get a shot of this for you guys so that you can see the figuring in the maple. It's called curly maple or flamed maple, and it looks like it has little stripes along the wood. Uh, this one is a lightly figured wood, so it's going to be used as the fingerboard or the fretboard, whichever one you want to call it. And for the body, we have here a beautiful piece of Appalachian Swamp Ash. So this is what the body is going to be made out of. It's going to be a two-piece body, so this piece will connect to another piece, and then we will cut out where the pattern is nice and pretty, and that's what the guitar body will show uh, with the stain. All right, so moving on to some of the more uh, fine details, the things that make the guitar actually work. Yeah, the wood's great, it's the body, it's how you hold the guitar so that you can play it, but it takes a lot more than just wood to make a guitar. Well, an electric guitar. We'll kind of start off with the body and the design. I have here some color tone ebony wood filler. We'll put that into the grain, that way the grain is stained darker than the rest of the wood. Sand it off and then the grain, the little patterning in the wood that is, uh, it'll be darker. We can put the next step on, which is the Crimson Guitar Stunning Stain Thalo Blue. I'll try to get you guys a shot of the inside of the lid so that you can actually see what color this will be. We'll place that blue color on top of the swamp ash body with the grain filled with the ebony wood and so it'll just pop that grain. The grain will be like a really dark brown or maybe even a black whenever the stain's applied to the top of it. So you really have that contrast of the light blue and then the dark wood grain. Also on top of the guitar are these. This is for the body, this is for the neck and the headstock. As you can see there are three colors in the single bind. It's black, white, black. That will go around the body. And the black binding is just solid black, just one solid piece of black binding. That will go uh, along the edges of the fretboard and on the headstock. Speaking of the fretboard, here is the piece of plastic that I will drill into the side of that binding on the fretboard. And these are the little side fret dots so that you know which side uh, or which fret you're on whenever you're playing. For the strings, they'll be the outside of the guitar. The Dario 942s. These are the Nickel Wounds EXL 120s. Great sounding strings. Next up are the pickups. And I wanted to be able to explain the pickups to you, but this is going to be some supplemental information because at the time of this recording and at the time of filming, I do not have the pickups in my possession. They are still on the way. So the pickups are going to be Planet Tone. They're going to be dual humbuckers, and they're going to be zebra pattern, which means the outside coil is going to be black, the inside coil is going to be white, or the cover for the coils are this is the Elite Humbucker Series, uh, their custom design shop. Uh, so I have designed these things to be what they call Elite Hot. Uh, so they're going to be hot pickups with uh, Alnico 4 uh, magnets. They're going to have double pole pieces and they're coming in a calibrated set uh, with a vintage braid and they're going to be uh, Gibson spaced at, at 50 millimeters. Next up we got this great little hip shot bridge, but this is a six string hardtail hip shot bridge in black. So for the tuners, we have the Daddario Planet Waves uh, locking auto trim tuners. 
So whenever you stick these on, they're going to be in the 3 plus 3 configuration. Maybe. But the auto trim feature is really cool on these tuners because when you tighten the strings up, there is a little, uh, it's almost like a, a pinch blade or something like that. Uh, as you're turning the string, it'll automatically clip it for you to the uh, perfect length. Next up, we have what are called speed tuners. These are the tuners that I'll be using. They're just black, uh, clear uh, plastic on the top with numbers uh, 0 through 10 uh, inside there. Very similar to what Gibson uh, and PRS are using. Where you plug in the guitar is called the jack plate. This one will be recessed on the end of the body. Um, and it is a black uh, recessed uh, Telecaster style uh, circular jack plate. Nothing super special about the next piece, just your basic triangular shaped uh, truss rod cover. This will go on the headstock uh, to cover up the hole. On the back side of the guitar, it will be a through body string style. Uh, I have these, they're called string ferrules. They're basically just little cylindrical. Uh, pieces of metal that you stick on the back of the guitar. That way whenever you stick the string through, the ring catches in the tiny little hole and they will stay inside the guitar out of sight so you have a nice clean look. For the nut, I have gone with graphite black to ma match the uh, black hardware style for this guitar. Uh, just your standard graphite nut. I told you this was going to be really detailed. So I even have Brown's Guitar Factory made the felt pieces uh, for going in between the guitar body, the finished guitar body, and the strap mounting buttons. These are the strap mounting buttons. Uh, they're fender style, a little bit wider, uh, so that the strap stays on better. Okay, so next up in the playability and the aesthetics of the instrument are the frets. Uh, the fret wires. Uh, this is stainless steel fret wire, uh, already pre-radiused, um, but these are supposed to last forever and they feel super smooth, uh, so they're going to feel good on players' fingers whenever they're playing them. Okay, so next I have a hollow aluminum rod, and you might be thinking, where in the heck are you going to put a hollow aluminum rod? Well, this, my friends, it's the um, fret marker design that I've decided to use. Uh, I am going to do uh, circular rings that have been kind of uh, drilled down into the, uh, the fretboard wood, and which is going to have hollow uh, aluminum uh, circular rings for the fret markers. Also, uh, on the back of the instrument, uh, these are going to be bolt-on necks. So I have neck ferrules uh, that will be recessed into the guitar uh, and the neck screws that will hold them in place. You know, spoiler alert, there will be um, a curve of the body in the back near the neck. Uh, that way the playability will be easier to get up into those higher frets like 20 and beyond. So I can rearrange these and it's not in a square and I can still have the neck bolted on. One piece that is kind of inside and outside is the switch. So I have a switchcraft switch here. Um, where it's going to have a black knob on the top to match the hardware. Uh, but it's a three-way toggle switch, uh, very similar to uh, what uh, you know Gibson or Epiphone are using as far as their switches are concerned. Here I have what they call the orange drop capacitor. Uh, supposed to be the best in the industry for it's a zero point zero two two. Um, it's for the best for humbuckers. Electronics matter a lot when you're building an electric guitar. Here I have CTS five hundred K pots uh, with ten percent resistance. Uh, these are the cream of the crop in the industry right now. I really want the best parts going into this guitar, so that's what's going into this guitar. These are the split shafts. Uh, makes it really easy to put any kind of knob uh, on top of these things. Here's a standard jack mount. Um, nothing you can't get too crazy with these things, but uh, it's a good one. Came from Mojo Tone. Uh, Mojo Tone is a company 
that supplies guitar parts, and they are based out of North Carolina. Uh, so a lot of these parts came from Mojo Tone. The other ones came from Stu Mac, which is based out of Ohio. Uh, so I am supporting American companies with the parts that I'm buying for this guitar. Lastly are the wires. Um, we have shielded wiring, and we have non-shielded wiring. The non-shielded wiring is just going to go in between the pots and the humbuckers. The shielded wiring is going to run to the uh, jack uh, input. So that concludes my extraordinarily in-depth review of the pre-production uh, Sherry guitar by Time Machine Guitar Company. Hopefully in the next um, four to six weeks uh, we will have this thing ready for demo and a video made and posted online. So keep checking the blog and keeping up with this instrument. It is going to sound incredible whenever it's done. And you're going to be able to buy one at a bargain. These things are going to start around the $1,000 price point. 100% American made with all the bells and whistles on it uh, that are usually offered in instruments that cost double what this instrument is going to cost. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you keep checking back for the finished product and demo um, on the Sherry Guitar by Time Machine Guitar Company. Thank you.